All right, guys, I'm going to show you the next uh, GSP file that I made for you. Um, I've got a couple of things here loaded up in Blackboard. So if you go to Blackboard and go to Course Content, again, there's a folder for this week. So you click on that folder. Over here on the left side, there's two different things. Um, <clears throat> one of them is uh, the worksheet with the homework problems on it. So you might want to have this open while you're working. And then the second thing is uh, the GSP file. You don't need to use this, but it might be helpful, so I, I made that. Um, <clears throat> so if you, if you download that file and then open it, it should look like this. And so what we're looking at is the Beltrami Poincaré upper, upper half plane model. And so uh, this is just a file that I made on my own. The other one I showed you guys was made professionally. Um, so this one might have a couple of bugs in it, so be careful. Um, but in this model, there's this line here. And the only things or the only objects that exist are the things that are above this line, meaning below here doesn't exist and actually on the line is not part of the upper half plane. Okay. So the question is, what do what are the objects in here? And I think what we have in here is uh, multiple, well, we have lines. And so um, I can, uh, I have some, made some tools. And so I have these labeled as H for hyperbolic lines. And so if you want to make a line with two points on the line, so this, this line here uh, that separates the upper half, upper half plane and the lower half plane, if I click on this tool, it'll let me drop a point on that line. And then if I drop another point, now again, this is just something I made. So if you drop the point up here, it's going to give you that so something that's not uh, a line. Okay, So this only works when you put the other point on the line. So this, or on the Euclidean line, I suppose I should say, to be careful. So this green arc here is a hyperbolic line. And uh, this blue dashed line down here, Euclidean line, is just the divider between the upper half plane and the lower. And so again, I can add another line if I wanted. And these two things now are hyperbolic lines. And I can drag the endpoints. Um, and watch how the two lines are changed, or the one line in this case. Um, um, so the other thing to consider here is what happens when um, it, you can think of it. It's a little difficult in this case to show it, but if I think about what happens is this: the the radius of this our in our world, a circle gets larger, what happens to the line? Okay, so to do that, I'm going to actually look at the other tool, or one of the other tools. So there's another tool in here that just says H line, so hyperbolic line, and then it's through two points. So if you just drop two points anywhere in the upper half plane, and then you have to also let the computer know where your line is. So if I click on this line, I get a hyperbolic line um, in the upper half plane model and I can move the point around um, I'm gonna guess that weird things happen again I just made this on my own so if I move below the x-axis the hyperbolic or this this line here the hyperbolic line appears to be below and that is not the case it should just not exist anymore um, so you should be only playing above the line um, but the, one of the things that I can see on here is what happens if I move this point so that my line, my hyperbolic line, becomes sort of really large. And at some point here, it disappears, which actually shouldn't happen. Any two points in this upper half plane should determine, uniquely determine a line. And so for some reason, when I pick these two points, there is no line that connects them. 
and that's uh, that's just sort of a limitation of the way that this was built. Okay, so and when this is happening is when these two lines or these two points um, are uh, in line vertically. So what I can do is I can have one other. I have built one other tool which I just called the array hyperbolic line, and so this is the other type of line. But I think it's important for us to realize that it's not really a different kind of line. It's just the limit of these lines, right? Is if I open this thing up so much, eventually it will look like one of these lines. So these are both supposed to be the exact same objects. Um, they're hyperbolic lines, okay? And um, just like in the other model, in the Poincaré disk model, um, we can think about some things that are a little bit weird. We can say, well, what happens if I was to draw some intersecting lines? And in this case, I just created a triangle here. It's bounded on three sides by a line or by lines. So this thing here is a triangle. Um, you could think about uh, what's the sum of the angles or the sum of the, the, sum of the measure of the angles. Um, I think the other reminder for this week is to remember that you have uh, the exterior angle theorem. So remember that if we're working in neutral geometry, those results can be applied to the hyperbolic geometry, to any geometry, and hyperbolic is a geometry. So if you can prove something in uh, neutral geometry, then it's, the result should hold here. And so you can think about what is it that we did with the uh, exterior angle theorem in neutral geometry versus in Euclidean geometry. Um, I hope that helps get you started. Email me, email me if you guys run into questions.